Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel and today we're going to make a dragon journal that looks like this and you can make one too. This is a collaboration with Denny from Wizardry Workshop. Let's get started. For this collaboration, Denny and I decided to go a more thrifty way and use items from thrift stores and stuff we can find in our recyclables. First, I needed some fabric. The pattern doesn't really matter, so I chose this horrible looking fabric and I also found some yarn or thread really that I'm going to use for binding the journal. I end up using this green one. I spent a total of five dollars at the thrift store. Now I also have a bucket load or actually a box load of these paper bags and I wanted to reuse these for this journal. I went with the plain ones so I have the pages that are blank and I unfold them completely, then fold the thing in half and score it with my scoring tool. And I do this for all the bags and then I score them to nine by seven inches and I leave the fold in. So I have already got the signature ready to go. From the paper leftovers, I'm going to make some clay. I tore up the pieces as much as I could and then poured over some boiling water to let that soak and boiling water just breaks down the particles a little bit better. I make sure that this sits for about two to three hours. I can then scoop out some of the water and the paper scraps. I need the water so it blends better. I have my stick blender here and I'm just going to blend this until all the paper is blended into this pulp. Now this might not look very appetizing, but this is necessary. It is just because this is brown paper instead of white paper and um, this is just what it looks like. I am squeezing out as much water as I can and then I have these little clumps left over and then I put it in this other blender thing and make it into fine shreds. If you're going to try this at home, I took two cups of paper shreds and then half a cup of this PVA school glue. I found out that this was not enough, so I think I added some more glue and it was like two thirds of a cup. I also add some white paint just to make it a little bit lighter and then I mix that all together. Now I add the final bit of paper as well because this was way too wet and so it's three cups to two thirds of a cup of glue, a little bit of paint. I also use some baby powder to make it a little bit more dry because it was still quite wet. These are the signatures for the journal. I think they turned out pretty good just because they were paper bags and now it's going to be a journal. Then I got this from the thrift store and I'm going to use this green one because that's woven. The other one is um, like twisted, like a yarn, normal yarn would be. So the green one is stronger. If you're going to attempt to make this clay at home, just do it by feel because Every measurement will be a little bit different, but you will make it work. I fold one of the pieces in half and in half again, so I know where I have to put the holes for the signatures. After I make the template with the holes in it, I can then use that to puncture the holes for all the other signatures. This is what it should look like after punching all the holes. And now it's time to sew. Start off by putting the needle through the first hole. Leave a little strand and carry the needle through the next hole. Put this all the way to the top and then work your way down again. Once you get to that loose strand, make a knot, then go through the hole at the bottom again. Here you're going to attach the next signature. Go through the hole at the bottom, then through to the second hole of the second signature, and then loop through the second 
stitch on the first signature. And this is how you're going to attach all the signatures together. If you have one available, a curved needle, like I'm showing here, is the best way to go in using Coptic stitch binding for book binding. Here are all the signatures stitched together. If you do this, it is so satisfying to finally hold your own bound book in your hands. Now I'm just going to clamp it here because I'm going to add a piece of fabric for strength to the spine. We have some PVA glue here and a piece of baking paper or parchment paper. And of course this material that I bought at the thrift store. I'm going to tear off a strip of this fabric and then measure it so I can attach it to the spine. I am ripping the paper instead of cutting it because it's just way faster. And also this makes sure that your fabric cut or torn edge is actually straight. Just brushing on the glue with a paintbrush, then adding the fabric and letting that dry. I'm going to let mine dry with the clamps on, but if you don't have these clamps, you can also use this piece of parchment to put on the flat side, this side of your book and put something heavy on top, but this makes sure that it doesn't stick to each other. I had to burn the edges of these pages because I only showed you in the beginning what we're making, but this is actually going to be a dragon journal burning the edges would be the right thing to do. Now, if you're going to attempt this, please be careful. For the cover, I'm using this Amazon box. I cut it up and then I have these cereal boxes, which I glue to the front and the cover. This is so that the uh, corrugation of the cardboard doesn't show and um, it makes it a little bit more sturdy. The covers have an overhang of a quarter inch at the top, side and bottom. And this is basically what the book is going to look like without all the decorations done yet. To make sure that the corrugation of the cardboard is not showing through on the sides of the fabric, I'm going to cover the sides of the entire covers with this tissue. You can also use normal napkin for this as well. And I'm just applying that with a mix of water and PVA glue. There was a lot of drying time involved with this project, so I used my hair dryer a lot in this one. Making the cover, here we have the two front and back covers all dry and ready to go. And with my one, two, three blocks, if you are wondering where I got them, I will leave a link in the description. I am just separating out two inches for the spine and then applying that PVA and water mixture again to attach these to the fabric. I'm then applying glue to the spine area because I'm going to add this extra strip of fabric for extra strength. I then make sure that I go into all the creases of the spine towards the covers so that the book will fold nicely. Now onto the cover itself, I'm going to glue in these corner pieces first before I do the sides and the top parts. Once that's all glued and dry, it's time to add in the fly leaves. And you saw the woolly logo there. Before I do that, I'm going to paint the cover black and then back onto the fly leaf for the, for the front and the back cover. I am going to strengthen them with some fabric again. This is so, this is where the book is held together so it's really important that that is strong and once that is dry I'm going on to uh, decorating the fly leaves. Now I had some extra paper bags and I'm painting them green and cutting little triangle like shapes to act like scales and these are the ones that you can see on the inside of the book as soon as you open and close it because the fly leaves will be at the front and the back cover. Now I found this a little bit dull so I added some uh, glitter as well but the glitter uh, was a bit too much and later I will adjust that a little bit. And then I'm gluing these fly leaves onto the book. 
I have a piece of parchment paper in between just to make sure that I don't glue all the pages together with this exercise. Then I can remove that once it's on and press it down. This is where I add way too much glitter in my opinion. I will tone it down eventually uh, a little bit, but uh, for now there is a lot of glitter on this page. Now that the cover of the book is dry, I can add the signature to the, the signature, the entire text block or book block to the book itself. And um, I'm gluing on the spine first or the sides of the spine. Don't glue the whole spine, just the sides and uh, clamp it down until it's completely dry. And then you can apply more glue to the actual fly leaf and glue that together like I'm doing here. So only the little part at the, at the side is glued to the cover of the book. And now we're just gluing on the rest of it. I forgot to uh, add a closure. Also, you can see that the book is not completely painted yet, but I will do that off camera, I think. I'm finding the middle, then with a palette knife, I pry open what I just glued down, put in some glue, and this is Fabri-Tac glue, and glue in that closure. I wanted to have a ribbon there, so there we have it. And this is where I tone down that glitter. It's still visible, it's just a little bit darker. Now, for the cover of the book, this is printed, obviously. We, we said we wouldn't use machines, but we meant like laser cutters and uh, 3D printers. So with chalk, I'm rubbing that on the back of the paper. And then with a pencil, I trace over where I want it to be. And that will leave a perfect impression of what I want the text to be. I'm going to fill in the text later, but first, Let's get on to sculpting a dragon eye. Some tin foil. I am starting off with a bowl, which I press down at the back. So we have like a half dome, which will be the eye and then covering that up with painter's tape. This is so that my homemade clay has something to stick to and then sticking this down with hot glue. With some more tin foil, I sculpt out the eyelids at the top and the bottom of these and then go over that with painter's tape again. Before I put on the eyelids, I'm going in with the clay first to cover up the eyeball and I'm trying to smooth this out as much as I can. And if you're using this kind of clay and want to smooth out some parts of your sculpt, this is easily done when you let it dry just a little bit and then smooth it out with water. I am just going to keep sculpting until this kind of blends in with the book itself. I really, really love how it turned out, by the way. But here is a mistake I made, which I'm going to correct. I use split peas, but because this project is really, really wet because of the nature of this clay, I will have to remove all the little half split peas that I put on this journal or this book, I should say. Um, I keep sculpting and then I realize that they've all become soft and soggy because of the clay and they just soak up all the water. So here I'm putting on the horns that I made out of tin foil and covered with painter's tape. And it looks really awesome. The texture of those split pieces is really, really cool. But yeah, I will have to remove them. Also here, I'm trying to add texture, but I don't like it. So I smooth it out again with a little bit of water and then add a different kind of texture in there. And this is the exact part where I thought, no, this is not going to work. They're all becoming soft and soggy and this is just not going to end well. So I took them all off and um, just sculpted some different kind of textures just with the clay. And also you can see me add this PVA and water mixture also to smooth things out and then adding detail with a toothpick. Here I am adding some details with a paint marker just so I can add the texture paint. This is puffy paint. Or texture paint you can get it anywhere I had it lying around from an old box and um, I'm just gonna fill in the letters and also all the scales that I just drew on with that paint pen this is what it looks like when it's just done but um, the split peas definitely have a use in craft projects just not this one 
I added some water and glue to my clay mixture, which made it into a paste that I can apply to finer details. Then on to the painting, the most exciting part of all my projects. I uh, painted the entire thing black and then with a white pencil, I'm just sculpting out where I want to uh, have the iris. And then I go in with yellow, pink and purple for the eye. All the supplies that I've used for this project can be found in the description box below. A little bit more information about this book. It is mentioned in the first Harry Potter book and it's called From Egg to Inferno, A Dragon Keeper's Guide. I am now brushing on some black acrylic watered down paint and dabbing that off with a cloth just so the highlights come back up. I am going over the eye with some watered down acrylics as well just to tone the color down just a little bit and then brushing dry brushing on some um, lighter colors to bring out all the details and to give it a bit more um, life I suppose here is some of that detail of the painting and now we just have to do the lettering and the scales I'm going over the scales with some of the dark green and later also with some uh, a glossy paint and here I am filling in those letters or actually going over the letters with this gold pen and also on the side of the book of course the spine because um, this makes it a real book let's have a look at the final result and this is the final result I love how this book turned out and I can't wait to see what Danny created for this collaboration Please go and check out this video, I will leave it in the description box below. All my social media can be found in the description below as well. And if you're new here, welcome! Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!